Russ Heaps, and welcome to this episode of Beer to Whiskey. On a little bit of a road trip, I'm here in Big Fork, Montana. Uh, I happen to be at the Flathead Lake Brewery, um, which is really quite the, quite the operation here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about beer. I'm, I'm sitting here with a buddy of mine I've known for 50 years, and I know it doesn't look like it, but yes, I am that uh, old enough to have a 50 year friend of 50 years. We've got Wrangler Rick Fowler here, who, who is actually a local and lives here. Sitting across from me, we have Sarah Peterson, and she is the marketing person. She comes up with all the great ideas uh, for, for getting the beer out the door. And sitting across from me is a guy that makes it all happen, David Brengard. And uh, he's the, uh, the master brewer here. So, uh, guys, welcome. And all it's, right, thank it's, you for coming. Yeah, it's, uh, thanks for, for inviting us. Um, let's just kind of start at the beginning and uh, tell me a little bit about the brewery, how it got started. Well, we opened in 2004 down in Woods Bay, which is uh, technically five miles south of where we're at in Big Fork. Um, uh, Greg Johnston, our owner, kind of got into the brewing business for fun and wanting to make a really good product. Um, Woods Bay was a really great spot for us. Being right on the lake, it made sense to name the brewery Flathead Lake Brewing Company. So we started off as kind of a smaller brewery. Um, had a really you know cozy uh, tap room environment. We kind of gained the respect of a lot of locals and after a few years kind of came into the problem that we couldn't make enough beer, which isn't that that's bad a of tough a problem. that's a tough problem to <laughs> yeah. have. So we look to expand and now we are currently here um, in Big Fork. We have our bigger production facility which is right behind us. Uh, this used to be an old bowling alley, so we renovated it to be what it is today. David, um, as the guy that, that creates the beer, have you always been the beer uh, brewmaster here? Uh, not always, no. I started with the company in 2014 to help open up this place up here. Transitionary period from uh, Woods Bay up to Big Fork. So what was your background? Had, had you been making beer other places or mm -hmm. did you just sort of? I spent 18 years at the brewery out in Oregon, the Chutes Brewery, and worked my way up through that company. Um, after about 18 that's, years. That's a big company. deal. That's a big, that's a big, a big craft deal. brewer. That it, they're a big craft brewery and I worked with some of the greatest brewers in America, I believe. Um, went to school at UC Davis, got to learn under Dr. Michael Lewis, who is a legend in the brewing industry. So that was really important to me. Working with some of those guys at Deschutes and seeing everybody branch off doing their own thing after the years, you know, I decided to kind of do my own thing too. So my family's out here in Montana and that was a big draw for me to come out here. Did you, did you start out here as the, as the head brewer or did, did you? Did I started out technically as a lead brewer. Mm -hmm. um, David had a lot to do. I remember coming out visiting before we moved here and he gave us a tour of the, the brewery when it was under construction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they literally built this facility from the ground up and it was really quite an experience to see, you know, the tour of how it all came together to create what it is today. What what kind of production are you guys doing here annually now? Well, we've pretty much tripled our production of what we were doing in Woods Bay. So we're right around 3,000 barrels. In Woods Bay, we were capped out about 1,200 barrels a year. Yeah. We have the capacity to do much more. Um, we're installing new tanks as we speak out here today. We can uh, probably do about 7,000 barrels a year. Wow. We're running full capacity year round within this facility. So we have plenty of room to grow. Are you doing a lot of distribution now or, or? Yeah, we distribute all throughout Montana and we also have a distributor in Wyoming. So we've really branched out, especially in the last year or two. Um, it was a big goal of ours to have our beer all throughout the state. So we're happy to have reached that and hopefully we will just keep continuing to grow. Uh, a question, any time that, that I have a uh, marketing person sitting at the table, I always ask this question. And, and that, that is, were you a beer person who got into marketing here, or are you a marketing person who happens to work at a beer company? First option, yeah. <laughs> yep, a uh, beer person. Um, when I first moved here, I started out as a summertime server at our tap room. And I've been here for about six years, and this is kind of where I've 
where I've gone. Just <laughs> keep going right yeah, up the ladder. Yeah, they keep right. asking me to do more and more stuff. <laughs> See, that's why that's you know sometimes being good isn't always the isn't always the smartest thing. David, what's your favorite beer to make? Well, I think what we're drinking today is one of my favorite beers. My favorite style of beer, I would have to say, is uh, sour beer, especially slightly sour beer. The history behind sour beer is amazing. And that's really what was being made in Belgium and uh, a little bit in France and a little bit in Germany for, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Before they discovered yeast and yeast strains, they were just allowing their beers to spontaneously ferment. And that's kind of where sour beers emerged from, is that you were getting wild yeast falling into that wort and spontaneously fermenting the beer. Um, so it's a really old school, traditional style. Now, is it the most popular beer? No, it doesn't rate up there with IPAs or pails, you know, but it is good. And one of my favorite things in the industry is have someone taste a beer like this that has never tried a sour beer before and see their expression and see if they, you know, really catch on to it or not. I'm I'm not a, a big sour guy. I'm, mm -hmm. It's not my. It's not what I would normally order. Mm -hmm. But this is pretty good. Yeah. So this is a mild sour beer. This isn't one of those over the top. How sour can you get it beers? This is really, really. I hate to use the term, but for the masses, um, sour beer is kind of a unique thing. But it is gaining in popularity, and it's becoming more and more um, refined. So with modern technology, obviously, we have very sterile yeast strains. We kind of do whatever we want with it. It's becoming more accepted within the uh, beer drinking community. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last year, you made an interesting beer. I think it was a Belgian beer that you added flavors to. Was that a? So that was also that's a sour beer. It's similar to what we're drinking here. So when we talk about sour beers, there's different ways that you can do it. Um, what we're drinking here and what you're talking of is the Berliner Weiss. And so a Berliner Weiss is old school beer made in Berlin. Um, it's very similar to this, which is a kettle sour beer. But what you do in the Berliner Weiss, you add either the raspberry syrup or the woodruff syrup to it. And it really turns a funky color, especially the woodruff, because it's like really, really bright green. And to bring that to Montana, I'm telling you, I was a little nervous, like, okay, are these people going to really like <laughs> pour Woodruff syrup in their beer and drink it traditionally through a straw? Really? And people did. And they loved it. And it really took off. And you're probably now probably making 16 different beers, probably? Or? Uh, throughout the year, I believe we do about 25, mm -hmm. 25 yeah. different beers. Um, and so we arrange from, we'll do sour beers, we'll do Belgians, we'll do lagers, but most of our beer, 90% of the beer we make here are just ales. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about the difference between lagers and ales, obviously it's a different yeast strain. One's called top fermenting and bottom fermenting. Do you have uh, five or six that you always have on tap? Or are there some that... Absolutely, our flagship beers. Yeah, Sarah? Yeah, um, you know, one of our most popular beers around the brewery is the Centennial IPA. Uh, we always have that on tap, as well as our Wild Mile Wheat, Buffalo Head Brown, Two Rivers Pale, uh, Imperial IPA, Dock Star Amber. I think those are kind of the, the main ones that we do year round. And then, you know, we have a bunch of different seasonals that we bring in and out, which is great for customers because you know, people are always wanting to try new things. Right. Right. What's the what's the uh, ABV on this? David? About five percent, oh. five and a half, right in there. Pretty, it's a session beer, well. then it, you can typically, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's in the pale category, right around in there. Yeah, yeah, under five percent, but yeah. You know, for a sour, it's not overpowering. It's really it's not. It's overpowering. very it's very drinkable. A lot of sours just sort of you know punch, punch you in the face. You, exactly. So if we want to talk a little bit about the beer, the difference with this type of beer, like I said previously, this is a kettle sour beer. Um, most of the sours that you get, uh, traditional sours, these sours that are very vinegary, very strong, right. that's made with a yeast strain called Britannomyces. And we also do that at our brewery, uh, but that's aged in oak barrels, and it takes about nine months to develop that type of beer. So. We put it in there, you inoculate it with the wild yeast, it sits in there for a long period of time, very slow acting, eating off the residual sugars, and creates those uh, acetic acid flavors as it develops. With this type of beer, what we do is we use a bacteria in it, lactobacillus, 
which you're going to find in yogurt, uh, a lot of fermentables um, in yogurt. So we use a strain of lactobacillus and dump it into the kettle and let it sit overnight. And it works very fast within about 15 hours. Oh, wow. And you're just watching that pH drop. And once it hits a certain pH, you're going to boil it and stop the process. So even though it doesn't have the deep characteristics of a Britannomyces sour beer, it does create a quick sour and it's a nice, simple tartness to the beer. Right. So when we talk about Britannomyces sours, you know, some of the descriptors are uh, barnyard, horsey, wet horse blanket, dirty sweat socks, and those are all <laughs> attributes to sour beers. And if you're really a sour <laughs> beer aficionado, you look for those in the oh, beers. Yeah. And people, it drives people crazy when you tell them that. And they're like, oh, I actually get that. And it does taste pleasant. Uh, with this, what we're tasting mostly is just kind of a tartness. It tastes a lot like a uh, natural yogurt almost. You know? Right, mm -hmm. right. So you don't want to use a lot of hops in something like this. It's going to overpower that flavor. So light body, a little bit of honey malt, lactobacillus. Then another advantage to making beers like this is that you aren't in risking infecting your brew house with it. So if you have oak casks sitting around full of Britannomyces, there is a possibility that those wild yeast could jump ship and infect the rest of your cellar, which is one of the last things you want to have. So with this, it's relatively safe. You dump it into the kettle, seal up the kettle, put a layer of CO2 over it, let it sit, and then boil it. And you no longer have wild yeast floating around or uh, bacteria floating around your brewery. So A, it's fast, B, it's pleasant, and C, there's less risk right. involved in brewing these types of beers at your brewery. It's amazing the science that goes into you know, brewing. Uh, like wine or, or mm -hmm. either, I mean, you know, you really get into a lot of chemistry when it comes down to making beer. Certainly, yeah. Chemistry, microbiology, engineering, physics, and it's an art. So and really being a good brewer, I mean, balancing the art and the science is really where the talent lies. And, and it, my understanding is that in brewing, cleanliness is next to godliness. Absolutely. Cle keeping everything clean is a big, yeah. big part of yeah, so I mean, obviously a lot of people think that brewers just sit around and taste beer all day and they're leaning against tape, you know, doing this <laughs> like you see on the TV commercials, which is what we do, but 85% of the time we're out there cleaning. Yeah, right. Part of it. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> and you bottle some unique things from time to time, too, because I know I've had a couple of specialty beers that were made in whiskey casks. Is yes. that right? Yeah. Yeah. So we do do a high-end um, oak-aged. So these are not infected beers with wild yeast or, uh, or bacteria, but we will take higher alcohol beers, add them into either oak, well, in either whiskey barrels or into wine barrels. Okay. And they'll age anywhere between six months and two years in those barrels. And really there's no measuring what you're gonna get in the final product other than tasting. And so we do, we put those into cork and cage, 750 milliliter bottles. And it's really kind of a, a special thing. Uh, we don't have those all the time, but when we do, they're pretty sought after. I just want, I just want to mention that, that you're probably hearing some background noise, and that's because we're in sort of a high traffic area. Uh, Flathead Brewing Company uh, has a very active brew pub uh, with a restaurant, and so there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, which may be some of the noise that that, uh, that you're hearing in the background. Sarah, let me ask you, what what beer launched you into craft beers? What what was the beer that really caught your attention? Oh man, well, I mean, I guess going way back, I also uh, have a little bit of an Oregon connection as well as David. I went to college out there. Um, you know, and Oregon's pretty well known for their craft beer selection, so. There was a couple out there that I started drinking I really liked. Um, there was uh, Deschutes um, Red Chair IPA. Pale Ale, it's a pale ale, correct? It's a Northwest Pale yeah. Ale, and so I'm an over sure hop pale ale. Huh. You, that was your recipe? Or? Uh, my original recipe was called <laughs> Altitude Amber, which uh, eventually turned into yeah. Red Chair. Evolved into yes. it. Which is one of the really popular beers these days. Yeah. So yeah, that was one of my favorites. Um, I, you know, just Oregon had some great breweries. Um, 
And I remember when I was applying for this job specifically, I didn't have any real experience working at a brewery, a restaurant, a bar, any of that. So I wrote this cover letter, and I, I remember at the time thinking it was really funny that my cover letter consisted of me explaining how much I like drinking beer <laughs> and how big of a fan of craft beer I am. And there's only certain circumstances you could put that in a job sure. <laughs> application. Yeah. Sure. David, what, what launched you on, on your quest for craft beer? What was the first thing you drank that you really liked? Yeah, I was just talking about it earlier today. Um, I moved to Portland, Oregon in 1989, and uh, there was a little pub in the back of a bakery. And I think it was probably of course the there only was. brewery in, or in Portland at that time. And they served this really cloudy beer. And I'd go over there. As soon as I turned 21, I started going in there. I was like, that's crazy, because I've never had a beer like that before. Well, it turns out this is the beginning stages of Widmere Brothers Brewing Company. Mm. And it was Widmere Hefeweizen. Oh. And so I really got hooked on the microbrews at that point. I remember drinking my very first Mirror Pond pale ale from Deschutes, and at that moment I decided to move to Bend and go to work for Deschutes, and I've been in the industry ever since. The, you guys still, you still have another uh, smaller operation on the lake, yes? We just recently closed that location okay. at the end of 2017. That was our original brewing Oh, location. okay, so that's the, that's, the wood, that's the bay one you were... Yeah. Yeah, we you know we had been in that building for you know several years, leasing it, you know, and we decided to kind of just make the move to have everything under one roof. And the advantage to that is that we package at this facility, so if we brew everything at this facility, then we can put whatever we want into packages. So what we've done is move to the um, blank cans and the wraparound labels. So okay. That gives us the opportunity to use a generic can just invest in a label and now we can instead of being strapped to three or four brands in the market now we put whatever we want in cans and just make a new label for it but by montana laws we couldn't transfer the beer from our old location to this location and package it so it really made sense for the company just yeah. to all get under one roof do everything in one place right and it gives us a lot more uh, versatility well, I know, I know uh, when I was introduced to, to uh, Flathead, like, um, that that's where we went. Was that a Sunday afternoon we went? Yeah, yeah, we were down there. They had some music on Sunday afternoon and met Greg and, uh, you know, just hung out. It had sort of a cheers atmosphere oh, yeah. to it. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, ironically, <clears throat> uh, we refer to Woods Bay as a suburb of Big Fork. <laughs> But uh, you know, there's there's a regular group of folks that frequented that beer, that mm -hmm. brewery uh, location for many many years, yeah. and n now they come up here. And behind us is the original bar from that location, and people still come up here with regularity to get together and I'll, drink I'll that Head Lake Brewery. I don't know if you can all see it here, but the painting was behind the bar at Woods Bay too, as well as the bell. So our old bar, and so we're trying yeah, to make that atmosphere yeah. still up here. And um, really, anybody that comes in here, one of the first things they notice is the view that we have. And you can see the entire Flathead Lake all, how far is it down? 30, 30 miles. miles yeah. And then you can see across the entire lake all the way down to Folsom. So speaking of an experimentation, David, is there a beer that, that you have not brewed yet that you are kind of dying to brew that you really would like to brew? This year, what I'm really looking forward to is a hoppy lager. Um, we have our regular Flathead Lake lager out there, which is really available for all the people that are not necessarily familiar with craft beer. And they want a craft beer, but they don't want all the hops and alcohol that goes with it. So we do do that. Now you can take that beer the, and turn it into a very hoppy lager. And so people have done this before, and it's called an IPL, Imperial pale water right so thinking about doing that uh, coming up soon here you guys have you guys have a restaurant here I I, I think I I met the uh, uh, the chef a little earlier uh, do you work at, at pairing foods to the beers is that is that on your mind when you're making the beer or is that on the kitchen's mind when they're deciding what the what the menu is going to be I think when you're drinking the beer you always kind of go to that place where what would go good with you know, 
And it's not that you're creating beer to go with the food, but when you're when you're drinking special, unique beers, especially something like this, you're always asking yourself, what is this? What should this be paired with? If I was sitting at home, what kind of food do I want to drink with this beer? So we have the advantage here is that we have a brewery right here and a great restaurant right next door. So we marry those together and we do a lot of beer dinners mm -hmm. throughout the year. Yep. Yeah, we do brewers dinners, course, and we you know choose select beers to go with each course. Um, I believe the kitchen they really do a great job at just incorporating the beer in our daily menu. Um, you know, we, we make house ale mustard, we have a beer cheese. Um, one of the really unique things that I think Deanna, our head chef, does is uh, beer ice cream. That's always a big popular hit around. We were just talking earlier, there should be more beer and ice cream. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's something we talk about all the time. And, and, and uh, for equal, equal opportunity, more whiskey and ice cream as Ooh, well. Yes. Um, well, I really think if I can interject here that what we're seeing in the craft beer industry, we're seeing the, what happened in the wine. So people are very interested in beer. Um, what I've heard, and I don't you know, mean this in any negative way towards wine, but there's only so many really wines you're going to produce. There's a lot more variety in beer. So the whole beer and food tasting thing, I think, is really, really sure. starting to show itself currently. Sure. Yeah. And people yeah. show up to these beer dinners oh, sure. and they're sold out every time we do it. What would you pair this with? I mean, a sour, uh, you know, what kind, of, what kind of food pairing would you do this sour with? You know, something like this. I, I really like sour beers used as a marinade, especially like on a fish. So if it was like kind of a lemon glaze on cod or something like that. Right. And I always come back to salads with this type of beer. Whereas with porters or stouts, you're looking at more like kind of like steaks or burgers, some sort of darker red meat. Right. Yeah. You know, the other thing I think you guys do such a great job of living here as we do <coughs> is giving back to the community mm. in a lot of different ways. And, <coughs> you know, my wife and I come to Science on Tap the first mm -hmm. Tuesday of every month, mm -hmm. which is paired yeah, so. with the Flathead Lakers and... Uh, the uh, Thanks, Greg. Ice, ice cream just magically appeared. So. That's the owner right there. <laughs> Perfect timing. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> but the you know the neat thing about um, the f pairing with the Flathead Lakers, it's a way to you know give money back to the community, sponsor interesting things that have to do with the environment, which this is just spectacular here, like you say, positioned on the lake, and uh, so the brewery does a great job with that kind of thing. Well, we're a very environmentally conscious brewery. We were um, trying to achieve a LEED certification when we built this brewery. We're still working on that currently, but it's very important to us to be environmentally conscious because of our proximity to the lake. So we're a low usage facility. Our water usage is very low. Lights are all LED. The R value on the building is one of the highest ratings of insulation. A lot of the materials are reuse materials. So we're very conscious about it. We uh, pre-treat all of our waste. And, but also beyond that, I think giving back to the community, and Sarah can speak more on that, mm -hmm. is super important to this brewery. Okay. And community involvement. I think that's important to any brewery, mm -hmm. to have community involvement. Yeah, being, I mean, especially being in such a small, tight-knit community, I think it's really important to give back to the people that come and support us. So there's a lot of, you know, great nonprofits, a lot of environmental groups that really work to preserve our public lands, you know, our, our lakes, our rivers, so our, the national park that's just 45 minutes away from us. So. We try to help them out as much as we can. Well, it's 45 minutes away on a good day. On a good day. Yeah. <laughs> it's three hours away on a weekend. Uh, <laughs> been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, the ice cream actually is. Oh, it's spectacular. That's, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty tasty stuff. Well, guys, all good things must come to an end. Um, uh, thanks for inviting us and having us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a lot of fun. Learned a lot about the, the brewery and, and sour beer. Uh, as well, which has been great. Um, in uh, our ongoing quest to spread the gospel of good taste, 
we're going to be hitting a lot of places like this. So, guys, cheers. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you.